comedians and novelists? Well, some people just get all the talent. If I had a million dollars, I'd pay your mother to have sex with me. Afterwards, I'd probably invest the remaining $999,990, $10 for sex with your mother, comedy. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today I'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 must-read books by American comedians. I'm BJ Novak, I'm the author of One More Thing, Stories and Other Stories. For this list, we're looking at the best books, be it a memoir, autobiography, collection of essays, short stories, or poetry written by a comedian from the United States. My book, Is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me, is a little bit of memoir, some comedy essays, and some complaints, hopefully told in a funny way. Number 10, Are You There Vodka? It's me, Chelsea. Chelsea Handler. I think it's a good, I think it's actually a very good exercise for everyone to admit who they would have sex with. The world is full of colorful personalities, but few shine as bright as Chelsea Handler. Chelsea may have no one to blame but herself for most of the wacky situations she finds herself in, but that doesn't make her retelling them any less funny. The title of her most successful book, a playful nod to Judy Bloom's Are You There God, It's Me, Margaret, should give you an idea of its contents, a collection of personal anecdotes, essays, and fuzzy memories. It was actually adapted into an NBC sitcom, which sadly lasted one season. This is how life works for me. I get a DUI, and then all of a sudden an apartment walking distance from work just mysteriously opens up. Regardless, she's written five best-selling books to date, including You Gonna Be Kidding Me, which also resulted in a stand-up comedy special. I got laser hair removal just so I could swim faster. <laughs> Number 9. Paddle Your Own Canoe. One Man's Fundamentals for Delicious Living. Nick Offerman. Let's say we just stand here in silence and think of ideas for projects. Nick Offerman is best known for playing the scotch-drinking, steak-eating, capitalism-loving Ron Swanson on Parks and Recreation. And as it turns out, they couldn't have picked a better man for the role. To the hunt. Here, here. As Offerman reveals in his comedic how-to memoir, he's as close to the real-life Ron Swanson as you're likely to find, just a touch less surly. In Paddle Your Own Canoe, Offerman shares his expertise on mustache growing, woodworking, the proper preparation of red meat, and much more. And that's why I'm proud to introduce my new line of handcrafted solid wood emojis. If you aspire to be as awesome as the Parks Department's manliest man, or want to see your significant other pick up a few new useful skills, you definitely have to check out this book. Fishing relaxes me. It's like yoga, except I still get to kill something. Number 8. I am America and so can you. Stephen Colbert and the writers of The Colbert Report. I'm doing my job right now. I got these cameras in here to prove it. If there was ever a man who committed to his on-screen television persona, it's this guy. He may have started off as a correspondent on The Daily Show. Have you been able to learn any of the specifics? Yes, I have, John. But Colbert carved out a niche for himself in parody news by taking on the guise of a conservative talk show host with The Colbert Report. What better way to celebrate a successful show than by giving its star a book of his very own? Hey, Senate! Hey, Senate! My dog accomplished more than you this week when it rolled over and licked its nuts. Well, this book isn't a true biography or collection of essays, but rather the biography and musings of the fictionalized proud conservative Stephen Colbert, as he appears on the show. It even won an award, the Stephen T. Colbert Award for the Literary Excellence. Seems legit. From the beginning of my show, it was my goal to live up to the name of this network, Influence Central. Number 7, Born Standing Up, A Comic's Life, Steve Martin. Get your weight guess right here, only a buck. Actual live weight guessing, take a chance and win some crap. There are few living comedians that can compete with Steve Martin's resume. While he was never an actual cast member on Saturday Night Live, he appeared on the show a whopping 27 times and has his very own SNL Best Of special. Well, um, what kind of beer do you have? Heineken, Bex, Amster Light, Corona. Ah, Corona. I have a Corona. Shaken, not stirred. He's a Grammy Award winning musician and a phenomenal banjo player. Well, I'm rambling, rambling round. I'm a rambling guy. I'm rambling. Oh, yes, oh, yes. In addition to being a skilled stand up comic, musician, and actor, he wrote the screenplay for a few of his most popular films, including The Jerk and Bowfinger. Let's try it one more time, uh, Slater, this time without the erection. For a guy that multi-talented, a book seemed inevitable, and in 2007, he published his memoir, exploring every aspect of his remarkable life. It's a captivating read, providing insight into even the earliest memories of one of the world's greatest comedians. Ivan introduced me, my opening line, hello, I'm Steve Martin, and I'll be out here in a minute, was met with one lone chuckle. 
Number six, Egghead, or You Can't Survive on Ideas Alone, Bo Burnham. Most of the best YouTubers are either Asian or they're gay. So there's an untapped YouTube celebrity, and his name is George Takei. As the youngest author on our list, Bo Burnham represents the changing face of comedy, that of the YouTube generation. He began performing and posting videos online at the tender age of 16, and his comedy music quickly earned him a dedicated following. And I want you like Anne Frank, wanted nobody to read her f***ing diary. Over the years, he has since branched out into stand-up comedy, acting, and in 2013 he released his first book of poetry, Egghead or You Can't Survive on Ideas Alone. The poetry found within is absurd, delightfully quirky, and utterly refreshing. Accompanied by assorted illustrations, it's a charming read that, however silly, is unlike any other poetry book you're likely to come across. I want you to somehow survive a terrible car crash and somehow not survive a small fender bender on the way back from the hospital. Thank you, that's called Dad. Number 5. One More Thing. Stories and Other Stories. B.J. Novak. Michael wanted me to ask you how to raise your desk chair. It's the lever on the side. <laughs> that's what I told him. Ryan on The Office is a bit of an enigma. Ambitious yet ultimately disinterested in hard work, he most often flies under the radar, allowing the more colorful, oddball employees around him to take center stage. B.J. Novak seems to follow his character's lead with his first book, which, rather than a memoir or collection of personal essays which has become the standard with comedians, takes on the understated format of a series of short stories. Novak was writing for The Office as early as the first season, and his originality and talent shine through in each of these vignettes. This doesn't feel like an actor writing a book. If B.J. Novak were just a writer, no one would have second-guessed him. So it was actually much more seamless than I might have thought it would have been to write stuff that was both funny and interesting. Number four, yes please, Amy Poehler. The book, Pawnee, the greatest town in America. I wrote a book. The Parks and Rec alumni aren't just talented comedians, they've got a knack for writing too. Any good comedian will tell you that your stand-up needs to come from personal experience, but few comedians are willing to honestly put their personal life on display to be consumed by the masses. I have to tell you, this feels like gotcha journalism. In what way? That way. You put gotcha on my face. Amy Poehler's book gives readers plenty of opportunity to pee themselves laughing, but what really makes the book stand out is her honesty. From her embarrassment and subsequent sense of shame over a certain Hurricane Mary SNL bit to her experience raising children, Puller provides a strikingly transparent look into her life, faults and all. I will look through all of your stuff if I go in your house. It's refreshing, heartwarming, and a truly uncommon type of book coming from a comedian. But you also write about being in your office crying. Well, sure, you know, it's a job, and, um, and it's a high-stakes job. Number three, modern romance and investigation, Aziz Ansari. What you're really looking for is just someone you can hold and watch, you know, a few hours of a critically acclaimed drama with. <laughs> and, uh, go to bed. If you pick up Modern Romance expecting Aziz's stand-up in book form, you might be disappointed. If you're interested in some of the research that inspired his recent hit Netflix series Master of None, however, you're in for a treat. You want to work under me? Whoa, uh, that's pretty forward. Yes, sure. Modern Romance sees Aziz breaking free from the typical comedian writes a book dynamic by teaming up with American sociologist Eric Kleinenberg in order to research the realities of contemporary love. The prep for the book involved hundreds of interviews around the world, a Reddit forum, and consultations with a variety of experts. Is it funny? Of course, Aziz Ansari can't not be funny. But it's also an insightful investigation into the modern realities of dating. Hey, looks like we do this. I think we're honky talking. Number two is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me and Other Concerns, Mindy Kaling. You're shaking. Are you alright? Just leave me alone! You may know her as Kelly Kapoor from The Office, or as Dr. Mindy Lahiri OBGYN from her series The Mindy Project. I'm at this point in my life where I can't just do what I want to do. You know, I have to do things that really move my life forward, like, like spinning. Do you guys know what that is? If you're Conan O'Brien, you most likely remember her as the intern who spent more time stalking you than actually doing her job. Whether you're Conan or just a normal fan, you can add talented writer to Mindy Kaling's ever-growing list of accomplishments. In her first book, Mindy explores everything from romantic misadventures to her time as a writer and producer. But never one to sit back and bask in her own success, she followed it up in 2015 with another best-selling collection of essays, aptly titled Why Not Me? Before we unveil our topic, here are a few honorable mentions. Number 1. 
bossy pants, Tina Fey. No, people did not say like, oh, you're so funny. Oh, I think you, I think mostly what com comedian people in comedy know at a certain age is that they want to be funny. It was number one on the New York Times bestseller list for five weeks straight. It allegedly sparked a bidding war between a number of publishing houses. It has sold over a million copies in the U.S., despite the unnerving cover art which replaces Tina's arms with those of a burly man. It's Bossy Pants, and it's about as much fun as a human being can have with a book. Well, you know, I have a type. As you know, my type is travel size. From the masterful mind of Tina Fey comes an autobiography we would have gladly read even if it were totally humorless. But it isn't. Faye gives readers insight into her upbringing and early comedy career, while simultaneously tapping into her trademark wit and outlandish humor that made 30 Rock such a unique comedic gem. And I guess in the back of my mind I thought we'd end up together someday. That, you know, the whole thing would turn out like a movie where Christopher Cross sings a song like, All my days I've been waiting for you to come back home. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite book written by a comedian? Joan Calamezzo claims there is a mistake in my book, which there is not. For more delightful top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Welcome to YouTube. Say hello to YouTube. Yeah. Say goodbye to your college scholarship.